Hello and welcome to another episode of The Rotated Cuff Expert. I'm Dr. Orcutt, and we're gonna talk today about the keys of recovering after um, shoulder surgery. Specifically, we're gonna talk about rotated cuff repair in this, in this episode. In my perspective, when we talk about what are the keys to be able to get through this recovery, get through the surgery, and have a successful result? Well, there's really four major keys to this, and these are kind of generic, but really important if you start to think about the global um, nature of shoulder surgery and rotator cuff repair. What are the big things that we have to be aware of that will give us a successful shoulder surgery? So the first thing is the severity of the tear. How big is the tear? If the tear is huge and it's old and it's retracted, what, remember well, there's a bunch of videos back there we talk about the qualities and what, what a shoulder rotator cuff tear is and how we decide, how we how do we classify them? So we have the ball and we have the, the, um, the rotator cuff coming across. So if you have a small tear in the quality of the actual tendon itself is good and it's not re torn and pulled way back, then that's gonna give us a better opportunity to have a better result. So that's why when we talk about, if you have a shoulder um, rotator cuff tear, it's better to fix it when it's a small tear uh, than it is to wait till it's a big tear. A big retracted tear is much harder to fix, much less reliable as far as the, the repair actually holding and not re-tearing. Um, so it's important. So the first key thing is the severity of the tear. If it's a big tear or the quality of the tendon, right? Because it's tendon. So, um, you know, my tendon might be better than a 80 year old's tendon, which my, and my tendon might be worse than a 20 year old's tendon. So it really matters the quality of the tendon itself. There are certain techniques that we can do to help reinforce a poor quality tendon, um, but it's really, it really does matter if you have a bad tear, a big tear and then bad quality, and they often go together. So that's one thing, severity of the tear. Two, quality of the repair. The quality of the repair actually has a lot to do um, with your surgeon, right? If a surgeon is relatively new or inexperienced or he does a whole bunch of um, shoulder replacements and not that many rotator cuff repairs, or he does a whole bunch of knee replacements and not very many rotator cuff repairs, the experience of the surgeon is important. So you need to make sure when you talk to your surgeon, you need to talk to them about, well, how many do you do? How, have, how long has he been doing this? You know, those kind of things which are important in, because if your repair is poor quality, like anything else, it will it can fall apart. So we need to make sure one, that the surgeon that you're dealing with is experienced and we can debate what that experience means. Maybe it's a, a guy just out of fellowship, but he did a ton of rotator cuff repairs when they were in, or gal, in fellowship, uh, which means that's usually the last step of training before you go out on your own. So that might be a great uh, experienced surgeon. And you might have a 60 year old who hasn't researched what the new techniques are in repair of shoulders, and that six-year-old actually might not have a very good quality repair. So it's important to talk with them how many to do, how long you've been doing this, um, kind, of, kind of just ask those questions. And if you get a really kind of crappy answer back or a standoffish answer back, I think that's actually a, a warning sign. It either means that they don't really want to talk to you about it, which is a problem because you need a surgeon that's gonna talk to you, or they don't do very many, um, and that's a problem too. So the quality of the repair has to do with how good your surgeon is. You need to know how good your surgeon is. Uh, there are uh, health grades and other ways to, to kind of um, to grade the surgeons. I'm not a really big fan of my- I have really good health grades. I'm not sure what that really means. I think that means that I give my patients what they want. I'm not sure health grades really um, translate like that. But anyway, the third thing is the, the body's ability to heal. So that's super important, right? And so if I'm 50 and I'm otherwise healthy, I don't have diabetes, I don't have any other major issues, I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, those kind of things, then my body's gonna be able to heal better. It's just gonna work better than if I'm 80 and I'm sick and I have COPD and I have uncontrolled diabetes, all those things mean that probably my body is not gonna heal quite as well. And therefore we need to make sure that we have understanding about what we can expect. So if we have a bad tendon tear and we have bad, what we call protoplasm term or bad patient, another bad patients, unhealthy patients, then we are setting ourselves up for a likely unsuccessful surgery. 
And so then we actually might switch from doing a rotator cuff repair, and that's maybe when we switch and do a, a shoulder replacement, um, a reverse shoulder replacement, where we have to rely less on the patient's body's ability to heal. And that's why as we get older, we have bad tears, we might be more likely to actually do a reverse total shoulder than try to fix it because we know fixing it probably isn't gonna work. So body's ability to heal is really important. And the last thing is patient compliance. Even the best surgeon can be undone by the worst patient. And the worst patient is interesting and it may not be, um, you know, they might be young and healthy, but they may be going to the gym the day after they had their shoulder replacement or, or after they have the shoulder rotator cuff repair and they can, cause real problems. So patient compliance is really important. And really talk with your doctor about what you can and what you can't do. Talk to them before surgery, because that's important. But probably even more important, understand what your post-op instructions are when you leave the hospital or the surgery center. Um, and what you're supposed to do from day zero of surgery to day 10, 14, whenever you're gonna go back and see them. That's important, but it's even more important. When you go back to see your doctor for your first, first post-op visit, or his assistant or whoever you're gonna see the first post-op visit. You have to be really understanding of what your limitations are, what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing because both of those things are important. If they say, you need to make sure you're moving your shoulder with your good hand, moving it so it doesn't get stiff, they need you to do that because if you get stiff, we got problems, right? Or on the other side, if they say, you need to stay still for four weeks, four weeks, um, and then we'll start therapy and you go, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm moving it, I'm moving it. You really need to listen. So you need to ask the question if it's not clear and you really need to listen to the answer and comply with the answer because that's gonna give you the best outcome, best chance of outcome. In summary, the four keys I think to, to, to recovering, the four keys to recovering from rotator cuff repair, some of them you can control, some of you can't control. Severity of your tear, well, it is what it is, you can't control that. Quality repair, you can control that. So talk to your doctor, make sure they are actually a, a good surgeon, experienced surgeon. And then you may look for other uh, people, you know, other recommendations from other patients. So that's important. Third, your body's ability to heal. You can sort of control it a little bit. If you're a smoker, stop smoking or decrease smoking. Your smoking is a big um, limitation of healing because it constricts blood vessels. We need the blood vessels to actually bring blood to heal that. So smoker, minimize smoking. Drinker, minimize drinking. Uh, diabetes, control your diabetes. So you can control it some degree. I mean, you can't, if you have diabetes, you can't make yourself have, not have diabetes. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, you can't take, make yourself not have rheumatoid arthritis, but you can make sure you control the disease the best possible to be very, uh, very aware and um, intentional in trying to control what you can control. And the last, compliance, obviously you have lots of control. The surgeon has no control over this. We tell people what to do and say, do this and don't do that. And most people are good. Most people try because they don't wanna go through a shoulder surgery again. It sucks, it's not a fun time. It hurts and it takes a long time to recover. So compliance typically isn't the issue. The other ones are more likely the issue, but you do have to be compliant. You have to talk to your surgeon. You have to understand what your surgeon is saying, understand what they're trying to tell you. Uh, so you can have the best re repair, best recovery possible. So hope this helps. Please like this video. Please comment on this video. Please uh, subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna continue to try to give as much information, uh, as much knowledge out there to help people recover from shoulder surgery. Thanks.